Atlanta, we won one bowl game in 75 years. So I know exactly <laughs> what they'd be like. Here's this TCU team. They've been very business-like, very impressive in practice. Kirk told us each guy, starter, scout teamer, backup, focused on each rep. You can see what it means to their fans to be here. Back-to-back -back undefeated regular seasons, but last year paired against Boise State. They lost that game even though these fans believe their team outplayed Boise, but now to get a chance to take on Wisconsin. And everybody aware of the fact that although TCU is the favorites here, Desmond, most of you experts, most of you experts <laughs> in Wisconsin to win this game. You know, a lot of people did. I think that TCU is a very good team. No matter what conference they played in, I don't care about their schedule. When you watch this team on the field, you know that they are a well-coached team, very disciplined in all three phases of the game. That's what's so impressive, Coach. Offense, defense, yes. and special teams. You know they have one of the best defenses in the country. Third in the country against the run. And that defensive team, 11 of them, are all from Texas. <laughs> the state of Texas against Wisconsin. Yes, sir. There's the Super Frog. Oh, Super Frog. Oh, yeah. TCU will tell you about their journey here to the Rose Bowl, dominating the Mountain West Conference. Wisconsin, there's a swagger for this team, and it kind of comes from their head coach, who has kind of a bad guy wrestler persona, Fred Pilema with Aaron Andrews. Well, what, 20 years ago to the day you were actually playing in the Rose Bowl? Tell me, what's it like to be coaching in it now versus playing? Well, it's a completely different feeling. Uh, obviously, a lot of different preparation and stuff, but couldn't ask for a better day out here today and go out and ask for our kids to do what they do. We talked about this on game day today. You've been emotional all week your family's here you played here you've got a senior class what are your emotions like now well it, it's now it's come to game time you block all that other stuff out um, you know before the game and preparation but when it comes to game day uh, it's just another day in the park for us you know I, I mean it's a big deal but now you got to focus on what you do you didn't want your guys to be in awe when they came to the Rose Bowl that's why you brought them here early to take everything in what have you noticed from them this afternoon well that's why we put them in red bridges that's the anti awe <laughs> pill uh, they're gonna be able to hopefully concentrate on the game and play the way we play does that seem to be working, the britches factor? So far, but we'll find out in about uh, 43 minutes. Thanks for your time. Thank you. That's what all the questions will be answered. Bielema breaking with tradition, bringing his team here ahead of the game. They have to get a taste of it. He felt when he was a player at Iowa in that Rose Bowl against Washington 20 years ago. They didn't handle the big stage. They got spooked, and they fell in a big hole early. Kickoff about 40 minutes away. They go upstairs to Brent Musburger. Brent. Chris, thank you very much. I'm up here with uh, Kirk Herbstreit. Herbie, first of all, very happy new year. Same to you. Indeed. Same. And uh, to all of you watching us, uh, they mentioned the red pants down on the field as we take a look at the Wisconsin players. The last time they wore the red pants with the white jerseys here in the Rose Bowl, they defeated Stanford. Now, on the other side, Nike preparing a special uniform for the Horned Frogs, but they insisted that it be the base purple color. And there you see they're adorned in their purple pants, but up on the helmet, something special, folks. The rose with the horn frog up there. <laughs> so, Herbie, we're just about ready to go. You know, as you and I have talked all along. So interesting. There's two games that the fan base really seems fascinated by. Obviously, the championship between Auburn and Oregon coming up on January 10th. But this game had a fascination with people, Wisconsin and TCU. There's no doubt about it. With this being really the year where we got into such big debates about the non-automatic qualifier and whether or not they deserve to not just be in the BCS, but maybe the BCS championship game game and the way it played out obviously TCU falling a little bit short but they finish in the top three and now the team that they're playing this the Wisconsin Badgers arguably the hottest team at the end of the country the most explosive offense in the country and they get a chance to go up against that big strong running game and that big offensive line Maybe let's talk about the two quarterbacks very efficient not necessarily stars in everybody's mind but let's start with Scott Tolzien the Badger quarterback well Scott Tolzien is a winner and he and he manages the game very well a great confidence Complement to this running game. And, you know, the one thing about Scott Tolzien, and Lyon, that both these guys are winners, Tolzien is a good compliment because of the play action pass. And what about Andy Dalton? This guy has seen everything as a starting quarterback, making his 49th career start. He's 41 and 7. He is a very big factor in this game because I think TCU, with all their athletic ability and speed, Dalton's decision making and getting the ball to that speed in space will be a big factor for the Horn Frogs offense. Let me uh, just touch on the weather here today. We've had a lot of rain in Southern California over the last few weeks and hard rain earlier this week, but it has cleared. It is absolutely beautiful. 
60 degrees, calm wind, and Chris Fowler, all systems are go. We should have a, a great setting for the granddaddy of them all, my friend. Yeah, all right, Brad, it is a flawless day for football here in Pasadena. TCU becoming the first team to play in a Rose Bowl from a non-AQ conference, that designation since 1935. So the Horned Frogs representing the Outsiders, the Badgers representing the Bullies in the Big Ten. Kickoff coming up soon. We'll be back. The Bud Light BCS pregame show is brought to you by Bud Light, it's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Let's see who's prime reform tonight. Brought to you by Gatorade. Talked about the stable of running backs for Wisconsin. John Clay is a finalist for the Doak Walker Award, but again, Monty Ball, very, very tough down the stretch. We talked about speedy young. James White, these guys just wear you down, wear you down, and we'll see if TCU, which is one defensive player bigger than 265 pounds, to be able to hang in for four quarters. I'd like to save Clay to late in the game when he really begins to punish people. Speaking of punishment, seeing what's happened to the Big Ten this afternoon in bowl games, aggressive Gator Bowl, Rich Rodriguez, wild speculation. This would be his final game, especially if they took a big loss and they take it a big loss as Mississippi State is overpowering and big Ballard muscles in only a three point game at that point. But then it was 31 14 at halftime after Chris Relf, an improved passer to Rico Sanders. Things really begin to unravel for the maze of blue, Desmond. Yeah, it's not looking good for CF right now. Yeah. And you know, you thought that the offense was scoring some yeah. points. They haven't yeah. scored any points since the first half and still stuck at 14. Yeah, Ooh. you know, one thing, if Coach Rodgers had a chance to say, it's gone now. Yeah. Oh, they don't give a darn about the whole state of Michigan. The SEC West is muscling. Look at Alabama. Mark Ingram against his dad's alma mater. Michigan native gets to the end zone. Then Greg McElroy in his final game. Look at Ingram. Shows the determination. Two. Hasn't been a great Three. year for the former Heisman Trophy winner. But look at the muscle he shows down inside the tent. Ingram would just, he would just muscle in the end zone there. McElroy would make some plays. Touchdown to Mays there. Julio Jones getting up 40. 9-7. Wow. Wow. Michigan, state of Michigan teams just hammered. What was I thinking when I picked? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Ticket City in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. And Texas Tech played in their home state. They got it going. They, they took a huge lead on Northwestern. This is like a beat down here. But Northwestern would get back in the game. A late interception return for a touchdown. Notice it's a, only a seven-point game. Red Raiders trying to salt it away in Tuberville. Kind of a down year, but they finish it with their eighth win, 45-38. So we'll update that game. Penn State and Florida also playing, but a rough afternoon so far for the Big Ten Conference in bowls. Can Wisconsin reverse that trend against TCU? Closing in on 21 minutes to kickoff here in Pasadena. We'll be back. High above the Rose Bowl, Farmers Insurance bringing you aerial coverage, coverage for your auto, home, life, and business. Brett talked about how calm it's been all morning. The beginning, you have a little bit of a breeze yeah. kick up as kickoff approaches inside of 29 minutes to go. Badger fans have enjoyed themselves all week. There was a big pep rally out in Santa Monica Pier a couple of days ago. Ron Dame, Heisman Trophy winner, was there. There's old Ron with some fans sharing the brand new touchdown big box. Taco Bell. <laughs> Ron could eat. Big eater. Big man. That's a big guy. Big runner. Exactly. <laughs> Pageantry continues here. We'll have much more in the game plans. Predictions ahead as the Horned Frogs and Badgers get set to do battle in this anticipated matchup here this afternoon. <laughs> On Wisconsin being played here. It's not Camp Randall Stadium. They'll not be playing jump around at the end of the third quarter by House of Pain. But boy, it almost looks like a Wisconsin home game. There is a whole lot of red ringing this place. TCU obviously a much smaller school, a much smaller number of alums. They turned out in force, but Wisconsin fans treat this like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to be here. 
TCU's road to the Rose Bowl began in Dallas against Oregon State. They played at Jerry Jones' beautiful palace there. It was 21 all in the third quarter. Even though TCU had a two to one edge in first downs, they had a big edge in total yards. The defense able to contain Quiz Rogers. They had a late touchdown, a late safety, and they won it by nine. The next week, they laid a beat down on Baylor. It was 35 3 at halftime. Andy Dalton was 21 of 23 for the game. Total domination of the Big 12 team. Game day was there when they rolled into Salt Lake City and absolutely hammered a Utah team that was ranked number five. They beat them 47-7, snapped the Utes' 21-game home winning streak. They had the one scare at home against San Diego State when the Aztecs threw a couple of late touchdown passes. That may have cost them some credibility for the voters, but they are here, ranked number three in the BCS. And more on the Horned Frogs journey here and their mindset. Aaron, what do you have? Gary Patterson had told us in that pregame that his team looked good. They were emotional. They were excited. He also mentioned yesterday, very quiet, very together. But when the Horned Frogs left the field, they were jumping around like they were Wisconsin. They were going nuts like a circus. It was crazy. And I kept my eye on quarterback Andy Dalton, who Gary Patterson had said been really to himself over the last couple of days. And he was going nuts, too. So it'll be interesting to see how the Horned Frogs' emotions translate on the field when kickoff arrives. And uh, like you guys mentioned earlier in the pregame, that Fiesta Bowl, Andy Dalton really, really felt terrible about the way he played through three interceptions and Gary Patterson was worried. He was going to try to put the weight of the world on his shoulders and try to win this game for his team. That's something he does not want Dalton to do today, Chris. That's for sure, Aaron. You know, he came out of character when things didn't go well against that tough Boise State defense last year. Dalton began to get angry. Yeah. And it, it wasn't the normal situation. All these guys say, Coach, that they know how to handle this. They're going to come out, take a nod, soak in the atmosphere, then get to business. Boy, it's not always that easy. Is it? <laughs> yeah, if I was Coach Patterson, I'd remind the football team that it's us against the world. It's a non-BCS against BCS. I'd remind him they did not want him here in Rose Bowl. They wanted Stanford. And now they got us, so... Hello, let's go get them. So it's safe to say they're playing for a little bit of respect. Yes, sir. And they're playing for pride. Yes. I think those are two excellent motivational factors in any sport, but especially in football. I do think that TCU realizes that, look, we're a fantastic team. We're playing against ourselves. Their mentality has to be if we go out there and play our type of football, we'll be okay no matter who you line up That's against right. us. We've got a couple of national championships in the resume, but that was way back before the AP poll came into play and national championships were very fractured back then. There are many believe and, and TCU fans surrounding us will tell us this is the, the biggest game in school history and they have yeah. a lot to gain if they can knock off Wisconsin but perhaps also a lot to lose because if they come in here as a favorite Lee and they're out muscled and flattened by a yes. Wisconsin team that'll set back the cause even though this team's going to the Big East next year I think perceptions will persist if TCU's not up to it. Today. Yes but I don't think it's possible. This TCU team is too good and too motivated to have Wisconsin blow them out. They're a good football team and ready to prove it. Plus they have an excellent coach and Coach Patterson. Yes. You know he's going to have his team ready and Andy Dog, Coach Patterson told me having Andy Dog on the center is like having an offensive coordinator running your offense on the field. So it's a big plus to have guys like Dalton and yeah. Carley, uh, Jimmy Young, yeah. Ed Wesley. These guys have been here before. They're used to a bowl game atmosphere. They're going to perform today. And I think TCU has a tremendous advantage in the special teams. I think that Curly guy, he That's could true. be the difference in punt returns yeah. or kickoff returns against Wisconsin. It's been a problem area for the Badgers covering pickoffs. Allowed a couple of kick returns for a touchdown, a punt return for a touchdown. Arizona State almost had another yeah. kick exactly. return for a touchdown. Yeah. Tackled at the one-yard line just as the first half was expiring. So, TCU, if you're looking for edges, these guys say there's one in the special team. Now down to kickoff continues back upstairs to Brent Kirk. Yes. All right, Chris, thank you very much. Well, TCU, a small private school versus Wisconsin, a huge public institution. And you can see the difference, but believe me that the TCU crowd makes up in size with the noise that they have created so far during the pregame warm-ups. I've never met a group of people who are any happier 
to be in a game that's not for a national championship. They're an undefeated team. But TCU so appreciates this moment here. There's no doubt. And, and I think for most of the year, it was them and Boise. Them and Boise. Who was going to have the edge? And then the upset late opened the door for TCU to have the opportunity to play in this big a game. And this is, let, let's not make any mistake. People can talk about the BCS all they want. This is the biggest game in school history. TCU is getting ready to play in the biggest game that they've ever played in. And this fan base, is, as you said, is very vibrant. You can feel the, the motion back in Fort Worth and Dallas. This, and the whole state of Texas pulling for the Horn Frogs to be able to represent themselves in this school. It was kind of neat that the uh, TCU school actually took out a full page ad in today's Los Angeles Times basically thanking the area and appreciating the fact that they're here and then of course Wisconsin what can you say about the Badger Nation they simply travel as well as any school in the country yeah anytime Wisconsin's gonna head to a bowl game especially the Rose Bowl you can expect 50 or 60 thousand fans that are gonna come in from Wisconsin and they're here they're ready to support their team they really are excited with the way their season ended but if you're just tuning into this game for the first time and hearing about TCU and Wisconsin there are a lot of people who feel that boy Wisconsin they're big and they're strong how's TCU gonna handle it a lot of people think TCU is the team that should win this football game. So as much as its perception is David versus Goliath, a lot of people think that the, uh, the Horn Frogs have what it takes to win this game. Well, I know I was one of those who was surprised. TCU was posted as the favorite, yep. and uh, that came out immediately, and it sure hasn't did. changed. So, Chris Fowler, the setting here is absolutely gorgeous. And to you and the gang down below, Happy New Year, Chris. At Brent St. I think we're all excited. As you can see, the aerial is just landing. <laughs> With the Wisconsin flag and the folks in red going crazy. Here's the Grand Marshal of the Tournament of Roses Parade, Paula Dean. Cooked up some brats, maybe for the Wisconsin fans. <laughs> Texas barbecue. Some vitamins. Sweet. Sweet. <laughs> queen is Evan Freeman, the 93rd Rose Queen of the 122nd Pasadena Tournament of Roses Parade. A huge, huge event here this morning. Folks sleeping out in the cold to get a good vantage point. They beamed around the world to millions and millions of people. And now the focus is on this beautiful football field with inside of 19 minutes to go to kick off. Talked about TCU's road here. What about the Wisconsin Badgers? They had a real fight early in the season against Arizona State. A point shot off the upright, a missed PAT. There's the tackle of the kickoff return at the one-yard line. And Wisconsin very lucky to survive an upset in September on their home field against the Sun Devils. The lone loss was at Michigan State. The Spartans' offense ran and threw, but after the game, Brett Bielema said it was sort of a, a team meeting. They decided they were too determined and too good to let this opportunity to win the Big Ten slip away, and that showed against Ohio State. Kickoff return to open things, power running game. There was a huge, huge party. College club was rocking at Madison all night long, and then down the stretch against some very weak defenses in the Big Ten, Wisconsin just manhandled the final four opponents by 38 points per game. So don't think too much about what they did against Purdue and Indiana, but notice against the top 20 defenses in the Big Ten this season, Iowa and Ohio State, Buckeyes in particular with the kind of athleticism that TCU features on defense, they still put 31 on the board, did not go three and out. And that is going to be a real key, Desmond, because TCU's defense does a great job of getting opponents off the field quickly, but the Badgers are just relentless. Now we'd like to welcome you. If you've been watching the Outback Bowl, Florida able to see a late victory over Penn State, 37-24. As Irvin Meyer goes out on a high note for Florida, and Meyer finishes at 104 and 23. It wasn't yeah. a real long career with the standards of Paterno and a lot of other guys, but with two national championships, a seven and one record in bowl games, it's a heck of a career. Oh, he had a heck of a career. And let me tell you, guys, this guy, this is going to be a football game. Yeah, you know he was a very productive coach. Oh, he's he's going to be. Yep. Yeah. Now let's get back to uh, the Wisconsin defense in this game. If you're just joining us, we're diving into the game. <laughs> Badger defense has looked a little bit vulnerable at times this year. TCU has lots of speed in offense. How do you see that matchup? Well, they were able to bring it together when they really needed to. I mean, this team, this defense was ranked number two in the Big Ten in total defense, only giving up 323 yards per game. Their best player on defense is number 99, J.J. Watt. He's a defensive lineman.
happy. They move him around a lot because teams try to double team him. He has great athletic ability. He used to be a tight end. See him right there tackling Terrell Pryor by his shoe shoelaces. And Jay Valet. Hey, this guy's about Corso's height. Jay Valet is a big hitter. Not the emblem of a guy's helmet one time. He likes to separate the ball from the receiver. Watch out for number two. And then Antonio Finellas, this cornerback. Brett Bielema said they don't come any tougher than this kid, Desmond. He's a ball hawk. He loves to compete. He leads the team in interceptions with four INTs. They don't have any great superstars on their team. Not a lot of guys are going to woo you with their statistics, but they play extremely well as a unit. They're well coached, very uh, fundamentally sound. I like this defensive unit. They're going to be tested, though, because they've never seen this type of athletic ability out in space all over the field like TCU has. On I, can't, I can't remind you to make one more time. The special teams, <laughs> the special teams from TCU could win this game for them. They can, but again, everything that you've seen up to this point, all the stats are a function of the opposition. In the Mount West Conference, CCU has a clear edge athletically in their opponents. I'm not sure all the Wisconsin folks believe that there's any sort of edge here today. Wisconsin underdog square to the odds makers, the pick of most of the experts, and CCU arrives with a chip on their shoulder as well. Everything we've been able to accomplish, everything we've tried to do as a program up to this point has focused and pinpointed right to this day. I think we're playing for uh, a lot of the, the non-AQ schools, uh, you know, to show that these smaller schools can play with the bigger conferences. People are going to say uh, it's a non-AQ and BCS and all that talk, but uh, for us, uh, as soon as you flipped on the film and you saw the way TCU played, the challenge was going to be very, very great. It's going to be about business. We're going to, we, when we walk out, we're going to look around at the crowd for one second and then we're gonna put our heads down and we're gonna go to work. Our bowl game isn't a vacation for us. It's not a chance for us to go and enjoy Disneyland. We're going down to Pasadena to win a football game against a great football team in TCU. So there are the subplots and the storylines. TCU, chance to kick down the door and win the Rose Bowl in their first trip here. And Wisconsin wanted to salvage some pride for the Big Ten Conference. It's been a rough, rough afternoon for that conference. 0-4 in bowls today, losing all three to the SEC, two of them in blowouts, and also losing to the Big 12. Mr. Corso, yeah, okay. during the course of the season, yes. you picked the Super Frog. Right. You picked Bucky Badger right. correctly to knock up yeah. Ohio State. How do you see this one? Well, I like, I like Wisconsin in this ball game. Now, everybody's talking about the running game from Wisconsin. I agree. But Scott Tolzien to Lance Kinrick, the tight end, the quarterback, the tight end, and the clutch is going to win it for Wisconsin. Come on, Coach. I like TCU because of the special teams. Yeah, that's Wisconsin right. special teams. The coverage units, they've been really bad. I think field position is going to be huge. I got the Horned Frogs. I got Wisconsin. Okay. <laughs> but don't your headgear because we're here in the oh, season. Oh, 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 I'm afraid. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, the split decision down here in the set would be it's a very even matchup. Stand by for the Horn Frogs and the Badgers. Back up here to Brent Musburger for Kirkson. Chris, thank you, and we welcome you to the 97th Rose Bowl in Pasadena, where this historical landmark has imploded with a force of fans bleeding two colors, red and purple. They are here to watch one of the most anticipated games of the bowl season, TCU and Wisconsin. Pasadena, California. The struggle, the anticipation, the drama, and the dreams have all come down to the granddaddy of them all. It's the Rose Bowl game, presented by Vizio. It's all business for the Wisconsin Badgers, who have returned to Pasadena after 11 long years, determined to capture their fourth consecutive victory at the Rose Bowl. But they are taking on a dominating TCU Horn Frog team in their very first Pasadena appearance. Determined here to walk away unbeaten and cement their program's place among the nation's elite. Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome to 2011 in the Rose Bowl with Kirk Herb Street, Aaron Andrews. I'm Brent Musburger. So nice you could join us today. And Herbie, the grander, 
of this scene. It is just one of the special occasions on the sporting calendar. There's nothing better for me personally, and I know how you feel as well about our trip every year to Pasadena. There's something about the history, the tradition, the pageantry, the San Gabriel Mountains looking over the stadium. Uh, it's as good as it gets, and Absolutely. this is uh, this will be a fun game today. Yeah, we've got a good one. Let's start off with that three-headed monster, that running game of the Badgers. Well, we've been talking about it for now about a month about Wisconsin, and of course their big offensive line and their running game. Hey, you got to be impressed with Monty Ball and what he did late in the year. Really tremendous patience as a runner, number 28. James White brings the quickness in the burst to the backfield. John Clay is back and healthy. He'll really try to give him a chance to show the power into that smaller TCU defense. The Horn Frogs are determined to load the line of scrimmage, so keep in mind, as Lee Corso said, Scott Tolzien and the play-action pass will be very, very essential to Wisconsin's chance to move the football. TCU crowds the line. Tolzien's going to try to throw over top of it. You know what's interesting, Herbie? Uh, everyone's talking about the speed and the aggressiveness of the TCU defense. That offense averages over 43 points a game. And that's the difference in the TCU program with Gary Patterson in the last four or five years. They can now score. And Andy Dalton is 41-7 and seven as a starting quarterback. He brings veteran leadership and decision-making to the position. They are physical in their own right. Up front on their offensive line, Ed Wesley, 32, can run the football. The X factor is Jeremy Curley, number 85. You'll see him watched up as a wide receiver. They try to get him in space and also on special teams. If he can get a little bit of a seam, he can pick up big chunks of yardage. Herbie, I'm always concerned about the nerves in a setting like this. What's your feeling? I agree with you. And with such a long layoff, when it's all this hype, I just wonder for TCU. They're so anxious to get here, so anxious to prove to the world that they belong. And after the way their Fiesta Bowl went last year against Boise State, they want to show that this team can beat Wisconsin and prove the experts wrong. And uh, they just have to remain cool early, try to settle into the game. Well, let's go down to the field right now. The TCU marching band. And here is the plane of our national anthem. you to the Nissan pregame shift for the 97th Rose Bowl game in Pasadena. And the Horn Frogs, unbeaten in the regular season for the second consecutive year, come out behind coach Gary Patterson. is 
Fred Bielma and the Wisconsin Badgers. This has been the Nissan pregame shift. Ready to go in Pasadena on a beautiful afternoon for football. 60 degrees here in Pasadena. You can see down at Fort Worth, home of TCU, 47 degrees. And in Madison, a little chilly 16. So I guess everybody's huddled around the TV sets and the fireplace. In Madison, ready to go. Now the captains are out at midfield. Our crew is from the SEC, and we have an outstanding referee, Steve Shaw, who is about to become the head of officials. So let's go down now to Steve. The president of the Tournament of Roses. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, let me show you this coin we have today. One side has the Wisconsin logo. On the other side, TCU logo. We'll let the coin fall to the ground. The teams whose logo is up will win the toss. Now, we're honored today to have our Grand Marshal, Ms. Paula Dean, tossing our coin. Paula, will you do us the honors? I would be delighted. Good luck, guys. I'm not used to flipping without my skillet, but I'm going to give it my best shot. <laughs> Good luck to all of y'all. And the toss is won by TCU. Uh, you're going to defer. Let me give you this coin back. Thank you, sir. Their defer is your choice. All right, they're going to receive which goal you want to defend. All right, turn your backs here. Wisconsin over here. And TCU down below, won the toss. Aaron Andrews is standing by with Coach Gary Patterson. So let's go to Aaron. Brent, thanks, Coach. Your defense leading the nation for the second straight year. Now you take on this offense with their accurate quarterback, their big line, and those powerful backs. Who do you attack first? Well, number one, you're not going to stop them. you got to control them. we got to tackle, play leverage. And uh, we can't allow the big run, and we, just, we can't allow the play action. So that's our goal today. Offense got to move the ball, score some points, and we got to try to contain them a little bit and then and find a way to win by one more point. You're an emotional guy. What was the last message to your team before they ran out? Well, I'd been in a white pant, a, a khaki pant. I was in all black. Coach, we got here in khaki, so I went in and changed, baby. So here we go. Looking good. Thanks. Thank you. There across the way on the far side, Brett Bielma, a player and a head coach in the Rose Bowl and so we are just about set to go the officiating crew takes its position so settle back everybody enjoy this gorgeous scene and we are ready to go with the 97th Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio. Turns it to the 31-yard line. And so here comes Scott Tulzeen, the Badger quarterback. Very efficient, not glamorous, but simply does not make the big mistake. And that'll be such a big thing today, just managing the game. Everybody thinks about Wisconsin and their big offensive line and their running game, and that's a big part of it. But today, his ability to throw the football, especially on early downs with a play-action pass, will be a big part of Wisconsin's attack. Marty Ball will be the first running back out. First carry for Ball. Huge hole. Explodes. 40, 35, and across the 30-yard line before he is knocked down. 
Well, this is what everybody wanted to see, Wisconsin's offensive line. What a great combination block. Kevin Zeitler, number 70, gets up, gets up to the linebacker, and Wisconsin picks up where they left off at the end of the regular season with a big effort here by that big offensive line in Monty Ball. A 40-yard run to open the game on the first down. And no, they didn't go to the left side. <laughs> no. They came back to the right side. Absolutely. Now it's the freshman from Fort Lauderdale, James White, who is the running back. Before the play. Before the snap, false start, number one on the offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Nick Toon, wide receiver. Talked about the emotion in this football game for these football players. Not only the long layoff, but the hype of this game for both teams. Come with the freshman. Bangs across the 30-yard line and Jason Teague the defensive back up to make the stop. There are your backs and receivers. Now, obviously, we've already seen two of the three backs. Nick Toon, guilty of the infraction. Watch for number 84, Lance Kendricks. And there is that offensive line. Karimi and Moffat on the left. Cones, who scores very high with the coaches. Zeitler and Wagner are on the right. And Monty Ball now checks back in alongside Tolzane, who is back in the gun. His second carry bounces off a tackle, makes his way to the 20, and this is a manageable third down coming. Yeah, up. it is. And considering they had the middle mistake there to get to first and 15, they come back with a couple runs and get to a manageable third down, which is exactly where Scott Tulzine needs to be. It's interesting. It's early in the game, but TCU just gave up their longest run that they've given up all year on the first play of this game. How do they respond here early in the game here on this first third down of the ball game? Double tight end, third and two. Paul Christ has the play call from up above. From the power set, another first down, and Monty Ball looking very efficient before Tanner Brock can bring him down. They've got nine guys up close to the line of scrimmage. This is the block that we see a lot. Wisconsin brings their linemen around. It's about the second or third time that the first man there that's been there in position to make a tackle has not been able to secure the tackle, and Ball and White both have been able to extend the play for another three or four yards. Now, Ball is over 900 yards on the season with those two carries. Ewing is set in front of it. Here comes Ball. He is tripped up with a beautiful tackle by T.J. Johnson. His 38th start as a Horn Frog. He's out of Garland, Texas. He forced six turnovers this year, and he's a flat good one. Did you see how he got underneath the block of Kendricks? He beat Kendricks to the point of attack. We heard that all week from TCU. Here comes Kendricks. He goes right underneath it and still was able to not only avoid the block of Kendricks, who's one of the best blocking tight ends around, but also secures the tackle. That was a great play there by Johnson. White's turn. We have not seen John Clay. They keep it on the ground to the 13-yard line, and Jones, another of the defensive backs, coming up to make the stop. So this is an interesting third down here, Herbie. This could be Tolzien putting it up for the first time. An interesting play selection by Paul Chris to move this ball down the field. They've not attempted a pass yet. And Paul Chris, much like the Ohio State game that you and I had, they just rolled up their sleeves early in that game and tried to drive the ball down the field running. But now they're going to see if they can throw against his TCU defense and protect Tolzien. He will throw for the first time. Middle dropped two. Covered by Jason T. Andy Dalton getting ready. 
Platoon is healthy for the first time really since the beginning of the season. Battled through a turf toe injury. Also had a thigh bruise against Ohio State. He, I don't think he was just ready for the ball. Tolzien back there with his first throw. Makes a pretty accurate throw, but I don't think Nick Toon got his head around in time to be able to make that catch. So here comes Philip Welsh. He will attempt a 30-yard field goal. Badgers strike first. Welcome back to the 97th Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio. Wisconsin three and TCU about to receive the kickoff. And here is one of their more dangerous players as Kirk Herbstreit pointed out in our opening. Jeremy Curley. He will try to give the Horn Frogs field position here and it'll be interesting to see how the Badgers decide to kick against him. They bring it on from the right side. And Curley gets into a gap and out to the 22. But overall, that is pretty good coverage. Jacob Pedersen, a tight end, down to make the stop. Well, here comes the other Mr. Efficiency, and this is Andy <laughs> Dalton. And uh, what a career he has had at Fort Worth, Herbie. 6'3", 220, 41 and 7 as a four-year starter for TCU. Very, very intelligent thing he said to us, you know, between the preparation, the experience, I've seen everything that every defense has to offer. That experience will be big tonight with his decision-making. Ed Wesley is the running back who just switched to the right. They throw on first down for 10 yards to Jimmy Young, the senior from Monroe, Louisiana. And this Horn Frog offense, which has averaged over 43 points a game. And there is Ed Wesley. Tucker will join him. We're going to use Evan Frosch today as a tight end against his Badger defense frequently. Marcus Cannon, number 61, out of Odessa, Texas. Great battle on the edge against J.J. Watt, number 99. Dalton, an efficient runner. And he makes his way out to the 43-yard line, forcing Henry to make the stop. Yeah, 77 carries on the year, and he does it just enough. J.J. Watt collapses down on the zone read on Ed Wesley, and he's able to pull the ball out. And they pull, they call that play just enough, Brent, to keep the defense honest, make them appreciate that, and avoid the defense from collapsing down on the ball carrier at all times. An 11-yard run, back-to-back -back first downs for the Horn Frogs. Their first series, five wide, empty backfield. Dalton has time, and the receiver was down, and there's a penalty. Curley goes down, and the penalty is called for pass interference, and it's on Smith. Now Devin Smith putting too much pressure on Curley. He's got a little bit physical there before the ball. Was... Pass interference, number 10 on the defense. That penalty will be enforced at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. What a contrast in styles, by the way, here. TCU coming out in their spread formation, empty formation. This is Jimmy Young dropping. And on the inside of that was Curley, who got pushed before the ball got there. It was a good call by the officials. But TCU wants to isolate these Wisconsin linebackers and safeties in space in both the run game and the pass attack. Now they're basically a full house backfield. And Badgers read it perfectly. And Zegwu makes his first stop of the game, number 93. Really good discipline by Nzegwu. Watch him come down. He just is able to avoid the block of Dooley. And I don't know if Dooley's assignment, the pulling guard is supposed to be able to pick that up, or if maybe on that play, because it's an option attack, they're hoping that Nzegwu will maybe move to the outside, be caught off guard, and allow the quarterback to dip underneath that. But that time, Nzegwu was all over it, reading his keys perfectly. Again, emptying out the backfield. Let's go! Deflected, incomplete, and that was J.J. Watt. 
making his first impact of this game by deflecting that pass. Third down and 10. So that Badger front. JJ has been a star, All American, efficient linebacker, somewhat underrated. Keep an eye on number nine, Blake Sorensen. The secondary, and of course, Valai, number two, is a star at safety, hard hitter. Third down and 10 now for TCU. He throws for a first down to Jimmy Young. That's the second catch of the game for Young. And that picks up another first down. And remember, that was third and long. Absolutely. And I think a little bit of confusion here by Finellis because of the formation and the way they stacked their receivers there to the, to the field. How about the arm strength by Andy Dalton on third and 10 getting back there and making a great throw to Jimmy Young before he was even close to the sideline, showing tremendous velocity on that throw. Matthew Tucker now the running back. Play action to him. Dalton has plenty of time incomplete. Curtis Clay was the attended receiver and I think Dalton thought he was going to work a little closer to the sideline and the Rose Bowl field is the best field that you're going to see in college football but there's been a lot of rain in Southern California and I don't know if it's the new cleats that TCU is wearing but I've really noticed whether it's on a kickoff return or there's receivers trying to get out of breaks there's a lot of the TCU wide receivers are slipping something to keep an eye on I think throughout this football game especially in the early going Tucker and Wayman James now in that backfield Dalton keeping it and running for the third time. Stop made by Bo Allen, freshman. Every time you run the quarterback, it gives you an advantage with the numbers, and it makes this Wisconsin defense. It's so concerned about Curley and Jimmy Young and all the speed on the perimeter, it makes him have to focus back to the quarterback on and to Andy Dalton. And all that's doing is not only picking up yards and giving him a manageable third down, it's setting up other plays down the road to get back out on the perimeter third down again for the Frogs. And there is a penalty flag. Watt was pointing the finger at Roth saying that he was leaning a little bit but it looked like J.J. Watt whether he's pulled off or not it's going to come down to either. Before the snap, false start number 70 on the offense five yard penalty Remains third down. J.J. Roth. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> J.J. Watt as he went around him. Top of the screen, 99, two-point stance. You see, just because of the respect that he has for J.J. Watt, he's trying to get a little bit of a head start to jump out there to help out. Now they've moved J.J. Watt around a little bit. Now he's on the inside over the right guard. So he's played both right and left defensive end. Now he's lined up a tackle trying to get a rush on Dalton, who throws. Got another first down. Converted on third and 11. And again, it is Jimmy Young who is on his way to a monster here. What a tremendous drive here for Andy Dalton. Second time, third down and long. The offensive line's given him time. And the receivers, if, if Dalton has time to throw against his secondary and against these linebackers, Dalton's going to make them pay for it. That time, Watt got up again, almost knocked the ball down. But Walton finds, or Dalton finds his man downfield. Ball is at the Badger, 26. Not afraid to stick his helmet in no. there, is he, Herbie? Here no. in the early going, uh, Watt making the stop, but Andy yeah. Dalton has come to run a little bit. He has, and, and clearly with having a month to prepare, they see something that they can take advantage of, and just picking up just three or four or five yards here and there, and also you wonder if it eventually sets up a bigger play down the road where they start to bite down on Dalton, maybe running the ball, and TCU loves double moves. They can give him a little move to the inside and then go deep downfield, and Dalton could get him and maybe increase him for a touchdown. Yeah, Dalton has carried the ball four times, throws it again, pump fake, goes back down the middle of the end zone. Touchdown, Horn Frogs. 
Bart Johnson, the senior from Brownwood, Texas, a 23-yard scoring strike. And there it was set up by what he was doing, just as you called. And the double move is something that TCU has had such great success with. The biggest game of the year against Utah on the road. They had success in a touchdown a couple times early in that game with double moves. And Dalton, because of his patience, lets the play develop, doesn't give it away. And all the throws that they had underneath Finally, they got the safety Aaron Henry to bite up, and they went right behind him. Ross Evans tacks on the extra point. TCU takes its first lead, 7-3, over the co-champions of the Big Ten. ESPN College Football, the Rose Bowl game, is presented by Vizio, delivering entertainment freedom for all. And in part by Tostitos, Lay's Classic, and Sun Chips. We make them natural, you make them fun. And Nissan, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. Well, this morning, the 122nd Rose Bowl Parade featured the TCU and Wisconsin marching bands. Paula Dean, of course, the Grand Marshal, one of the great cooks, and it was so cute when she asked Steve Shaw before the game, can I flip this coin with a skillet? And he said, no, ma'am. So here's the kickoff, fielded on the six-yard line by Gilreath, looking for an alley. And he is out to the 32. Herbie, let's go back to that score. Well, we, they had so much success underneath. And here's Jeremy Curley, who's going to come in. It's kind of show that it's going to be a screen. The guy that they picked on is Aaron Henry coming up to respect that. And then the touchdown gets right behind them. But watch Aaron Henry come in, see that he thinks it's potentially a screen to Curley. And then right behind him, it opens up a nice seam there to Bart Johnson. And the patience that time by Andy Dalton paid off. It's Ten play drive, six passes. That was textbook that time for Justin Fuente, the co-offensive coordinator for the Horn Frogs calling the plays. Ball is the tailback. Workhorse here in the early going, and this time he has jumped at the point of attack. So here is this. Some have said undersized, but I want to tell you this. This is a very fast defense. Keep an eye on number 96, Wayne Daniels. He's Ed. Remember Jerry Hughes, great rusher, Tank Carter and Tanner Brock, two tackling machines at the linebacking spot, and a very tall, rangy group of safeties. They play that base 4-2-5. Tolzien, middle, and he throws to his favorite target, number 84, Lance Kendricks. And Kendricks is a guy who they want to try to isolate one-on-one. -on -one. This is a nice job of giving Tolzien time, but look at, again, another defense, another player from TCU slipping, this time to Karen Cuba, who was isolated one-on-one -on -one against Kendricks. Kendricks makes a move to the inside, Cuba goes down. Very simple throw for Tolzien, who completed 74% of his passes this year. Tops in the country. 14 yards is the gain. And on the first down, here is Ball on a sweep left. And he breaks a tackle. Finally brought down by Greg McCoy. These big offensive linemen trying to get a push. This is the battle we all want to see. The movement from TCU's defensive line. How about the center, Peter Kahn's trying to lead the way. You don't see that very often from a center. The athletic ability to come around and try to help out. He gets there, knocks away two TCU defenders, and Ball gets up and picks up more yards. John Clay has just checked in for the first time as the tailback. They show a power eye formation. Play action. Tolzien comes to the near side, and it is complete. Aubrey Darris with his first catch of the game. Now here's the view from our direct TV ultimate picture cam. Good job again. He's in rhythm. Both these quarterbacks have come to throw. And actually, the pressure got to him. He does a good job throwing it from the left hash all the way to the right sideline. A long throw, but a good call on an early down by Paul Chris. Try to take advantage of the aggressive TCU defense crowding that line of scrimmage.
Play action again. Got a man wide open. Down to the one yard line they go on the pass to Brady Ewing, the fullback. Another play action here to try to get these defensive backs up close to the line of scrimmage. And what down did it come on? First and ten. When you're thinking, uh, you got to be ready for Big John Clay, they're going to run the ball. The safeties get out of position, and Ewing, who is known as one of the best blocking fullbacks in the country, showing the hands there, his eighth catch of the year. And how about the shot that Scott Tolzien takes that time from Tank Carter? Now you would expect for sure. Big number 32 is coming at him behind that massive offensive line. Here he is. Touchdown. Wisconsin regains the lead. We got a ball game. We got a ball game. It's going to be fun. That bad kick. <laughs> You know it's coming. You just got to be able to make that play. That initial contact, we've seen it in these first couple drives. The Wisconsin running backs are running through those would-be tacklers, those arm tackles, and getting more yards. And that time, big, powerful John Clay gets it into the end zone. Welsh tacks on the extra point. So Clay's first touch of the day results in the Badgers' first touchdown of the day. Farmers Insurance bringing you aerial coverage of the Rose Bowl game and coverage for your auto home life and business. Well during that timeout they brought out the level on the goalposts that the Badgers just used for their extra point and it did require a little bit of an adjustment. Here we have it. I've, I've like seen it in basketball. That. Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Oh yeah. To level up, and now we're set to go. <laughs> they are kicking to the corner, and this time Curley is over on that side. They want the ball in his hands, and why not? He explodes to the 43 yard line, and Welsh, the kicker, is there to bring him down. Badgers lead the Horn Frogs. We'll be right back. Andy Dalton and the Frog offense ready to go back to work. Ed Wesley is a running back. And in that scoring drive by TCU, they were two of two on third down. And both times that was third and ten. And Andy Dalton carried the ball as a runner four times this time he hands it off to Wesley and the stop is made by linebacker Mike Taylor looking forward to seeing how Wisconsin tries to adjust to this uh, this skill and speed the, the thing that's most challenging facing this TCU offense is how multiple they are with their formations and personnel groupings. Brent Bielema telling us this week, if I had one week to get ready for this offense, it would be a nightmare. Having the extra time has really helped them dial in to all the different formations and adjustments you have to make as a defense. They're the full house backfield, basically, and pump going deep again. And he's got him inside the 15-yard line. Josh Boyce, his first catch of the game. Boy, Josh Boyce has a tremendous future in Fort Worth. The freshman who had a 93-yard touchdown against Utah. Another double move. This time they catch Brinkley peaking on an underneath route. This is why you have to respect the Hindi Dalton. This repertoire, he's got a lot of different receivers. He can throw it to anybody, and you have to respect the underneath game, and then they'll give you the pump fake, and they'll get downfield in a hurry. 44 yards, and the Horn Frogs empty out the backfield here on a first down, and Dalton's fifth carry of the game. Let's give Taylor credit for another stop, the Badger linebacker. A big part of this game throughout the four quarters will be TCU containing J.J. Watt, which they've done a pretty good job of up to this point. But you know that's going to be an ongoing battle up front, not just for Marcus Cannon, who's the left tackle, but the entire offensive line and the pass protection group of, uh, of TCU trying to keep him out of that backfield. 
Hurley is one of the three wide to the right. Dalton again. Close to a first down. A designed quarterback draw. This is a big part of this game plan right now for TCU. Waiting just a beat or two and then just following the big center, Jake Kirkpatrick. And also the running back, Ed Wesley. And so far, Andy Dalton not just hurting the Badgers through the air, but also running the football six times for 27 yards. Third down. And note it's not third and goal. They can still get a first down down here. Here comes Dalton again for the end zone. Touchdown, TCU. lead did not last long folks we've got two teams that average 43.3 points a game remember the bowl game Andy Dalton had last year against Boise State I think this game is personal for Dalton another zone read JJ Watt collapsed down on the running back Dalton makes a great read. Looks like they're going to take a peek at this. He had his ball, the ball in his left arm instead of the right arm. Just going to take a peek to see if the ball got across the goal line before he went out of bounds. Remember, it's where the ball is, not his, not where his foot is. So as, before, as he gets out of bounds, that's that's worth another look for sure. Should have put that ball last second over into that right arm and extended it across the goal line. Well, Dave Perry is up here in the booth with us. And, of course, he's done a great job through the years, not only with the Big Ten previously, but now as the head of the Federation of Officials. And he thinks he was in the end zone. He That's just gave a little thumbs up over here. So we will see. Remember, it is an SEC instant replay official who will take a look at it. Unlike the NFL, Shaw will not go underneath the hood here. And then they will receive word of it. Even if it were to be ruled not a touchdown, it would be a first and goal. Yes, it would. One thing to keep in mind, very, very short. But it looks to us and to Dave Perry like he got in. What do you think? If, if Dave Perry says that, that it's in, then, then chances are it's it's in. It looks, it's definitely a close call. The play was outstanding. Watch J.J. Watt come down. Hesitates just for a second. Dalton's got the confidence to think, I'm going to pull this ball, and I know I can beat him to the corner. So they, instead of thinking, hey, you got to block J.J. Watt, it'll be a touchdown. There it is. Dave Perry is right. Why not? You know, he has a son, John Perry. This is his third year as a referee in the National Football League. And my friend Dave, I think he's refereed and umpired just about everything in the world. So we count on him. Now. So here we go. We've had 23 points scored here in the first quarter of this football game. And now Ross Evans tacks on another extra point for the Frogs. Justin Fuente is the offensive coordinator. You saw Andy Dalton on the telephone. I want to give you one quick uh, anecdote as you look at Fuente's and then that conversation with him about Andy. I said to him, okay, what was the best thing about going to Disneyland this year? And he said, we got to go to the front of every line. Oh, I love and that. it was such an honest human reaction. And folks, don't we all wish we could go to the head of the line at Disneyland when we're there? They had a wonderful time. Two very class football teams and operations in this game. He kind of had that look on his face like, the best part? Well... They, they let us go to the front of the I line. Know. Like, can you believe that? I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> well, there's Coach Patterson, who in his 10 years with TCU has done such a fabulous job of putting together the nucleus of this team. Remember, he was a, a defensive coordinator under Dennis Franchoni before Dennis left for Alabama, and then he became the head coach. He's been offered other head coaching jobs. I know that Kansas State was interested. That's uh, Gary's alma mater, but he's very comfortable. And uh, he has it going down there. They're improving the stadium. Great fan base in Fort Worth. Kevin Sharples a kick it off. And White is back deep with Gilruth. And again, it is Gilruth. 
Good special teams coverage there. And on Monday night, ESPN delivers the Discover Orange Bowl, featuring two of the hottest teams and two of the top quarterbacks in the nation. High 10 player of the year, Andrew Luck, leads the Stanford Cardinal against Tyrod Taylor and the Virginia Tech Hokies. Coverage begins at 8 Eastern time. And Herbie, this is a heck of a duel. Different styles, yeah. but very good. Boy, what a great job Andrew Luck did this year with their balanced attack for the Cardinal at Jim Harbaugh and Tyrod Taylor, one of the best dual threat quarterbacks in the game, and tremendous leadership for the Hokies. Money ball back in the backfield here for Tolzien. And here they come behind that massive offensive line. And you just get the feeling that the first team that can discover a stop defense is going to get the upper hand. Yeah. So far, we haven't seen it. We've not. And it makes you really think about turnover. Who, who, the big turnovers in this game, and who ends up winning the turnover margin to give their own offense another opportunity to attack the, the other defense also could be a big factor before this game's said and done. But these offenses got after it in the first quarter. And that was Boyce, the young man who set up that TCU touchdown, who was receiving attention on the sideline. 14-10. TCU leads Wisconsin in the Rose Bowl. Welcome back to the 97th Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio. High scoring opening quarter 14 10 TCU a non automatic qualifier with a lead over Wisconsin the co-champions of the Big Ten in 2012 TCU will move to the Big East and you see the San Gabriel Mountains in the background what a glorious <laughs> setting this is we open the second quarter Badger football second down and five Scott Tolzien. Hands it off to ball or explodes in the middle again to the 46 yard line and Cuba makes a stop. Herbie, you made the point uh, that battle between the front and the defense very lopsided in the first quarter. Uh, everybody wanted to see how the size of Wisconsin's offensive line would do with the, 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 the not the lack of sides, but just the, the, uh, the speed, the aggressive nature that TCU has, the way they move people around. They try to confuse you, and for a quarter anyway, and now another play, Wisconsin really controls things at the line of scrimmage against the speed of TCU. It is big that TCU held the Badgers to a field goal on their first drive of this game. And they come back with White the freshman. And let's check in down below with Aaron Andrews. And just to add on the size disadvantage with TCU's defense, Gary Patterson's been walking over to the bench every time they've been there and said, tackle low. Do not tackle them in the middle. You won't get them down. You have to tackle lower. And with that was a couple of the good tackles. Johnson made one. You pointed that out. Yeah. It got down into the... Uh, you got to get low and you got to gang tackle. You know, the only way you're going to slow down this big offensive, but not the line, but the backs, is you got to have two or three different jerseys trying to slow down these running backs. Second and six. And now it'll be third down and James White. St. Thomas Aquinas, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Badgers do a great job of seeking out some skilled players from the state of Florida and the state of Texas, Ohio, and they do a heck of a job of recruiting right there in their home base, Wisconsin, Minnesota. The J.J. Watt story, of course, many of you are very familiar with. He was a tight end at Central Michigan. Brian Kelly left, committed to Minnesota. Glenn Mason left, finally enrolled with his heart back in Madison, sat out a year. And switched over to the defense, and he's been a great player. Now we've got third down and three. Very close. The front held for the Frogs against White this time. Except they're about a half a yard short. Brett Bielema has an aggressive nature. Remember that call that he made against Iowa to help the Badgers end up beating the Hawkeyes on the road. So you know his, his nature is to go for it. And the big fella, number 32, is Daddy. He grew up admiring one Jimmy Brown of the Cleveland Browns. And his son wears that familiar number 32 that Brown wore during his Hall of Fame career with the Browns. And let's see if he can hammer like Big Jim. Over the top. First down, Badgers. 
actually pretty good penetration that time by Tanner Brock, the linebacker, 35, is able to slip through there, hits him low, but the size of Clay, not only does he get through right there, Brock hit him right before the line of scrimmage, but you can see that John Clay, even though he's a big back, pretty nimble on his feet. He got through Brock, landed on his feet, and picked up a few more yards. This is where Wisconsin typically likes to get into their play-action game. They start to sustain a drive, get you thinking about the run, and then they can start to throw the ball. There is a play action. White, the running back, going to throw back. Incomplete, and they had him slipped out of the backfield. And Tolzien would love to have that throw back. Yes, he would. It, he, he needed to wait just a little bit longer for White to be able to separate and get downfield. He also had Lance Kendricks on that, a little bit, about another 10 or 15 yards downfield. But like I said, and this is something that TCU, they've talked all week about using their eyes. We're, we know we have to match up physically to the run game, but we have to use our eyes for discipline for Gary Patterson to get back against the play action. That time they left a couple receivers open there on the first and 10 play action pass. Mighty ball back on the field. Gets the carry, huge hole in the middle for nine yards. I mean, the middle of that not Peter Kahn's grades out as high as any offensive lineman. Look at that block by 66. He blew the door off. Kahn's is one of the top centers around. He's only a sophomore. But see how they get you? They get you on skates, and they push you to the sideline. That time, all three. You had a block by Kahn's. Moffitt, the left guard. Karimi, who won the outlet. They locked up with their guys and just pushed them to the sideline. And that's how that hole opened up right up into the middle. Monty Ball closing in on 100 yards. He has 96. 10 carries, 40 in one carry. Looking for 100, and he's thrown back, but he picked up the first down. Corey Grant making the stop. Well, this is such a mismatch right now. There's such confidence, I think, from Wisconsin and Paul Chris to play calling. I think it's a matter of, hey, they know that we're going to run. They have extra men up at the line of scrimmage, but we have such an advantage with our size and the way we're pushing them around. We're going to continue to run the football, mix in play action pass here or there, and I think that's going to be the kind of the formula that they use to continue to move the football right down the field. They've only had one negative play so far in this game. And Tolzien on a busted play. Wayne Daniels throwing him to the ground. Self-destructing, which offense eventually puts the ball down and allows the opponent to pick it up. We talked about that could that could go a long way in determining who wins this game with the way these two offenses are moving up and down the field. Huge for TCU to put the Badgers in second down and long. Second down and 11. And the handoff to White, the freshman. And he is stuffed, and now it is third and long, and the Badgers have to come up with a pass. Tank Carter makes the stop. Remember when he met with us after practice, he said, we have to beat him to the point of attack. He gets behind the lineman and just uses his speed to be able to chase down White, the ball carrier, who's the fastest back of the Badgers, of the, of the trio that they have. That time, a great job and great instincts there by the junior linebacker. Kendricks off to the right. They've gone to tune once in this game. Tolzien comes in underneath. Not a first down throw. Greg McCoy comes up on Anderson. Well, that was just great, great coverage downfield. And these routes, because it was third and long, took a lot of time. TCU got some pressure, but Scott Tolzien showing that he also can sit in there. Picks up enough yards to have a, a uh, likely field goal attempt that they have a chance to put up some more points here with Phillip Welch. He was terrific in the pregame warm-up. Made several 50-yarders. He's from the right hash. He's 8 of 11 from the 40 to the 49. He pulled this one to the left and missed it. Missed a 39-yard field goal. He was coming up empty in this game on any drive oh. is huge. Yeah, he was 7 of 7 inside 40 yards coming into this game. So the missed field goal, like you said, it's a breaking a serve. Now the ball is back to Andy Dalton.
now we'll see if the Badgers can hold at the point of attack. One of the great scenes. Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio. TCU 14, Wisconsin 10. Second quarter. Jet in the round and deep goes Dalton incomplete and he's lucky it wasn't picked up now let's go back to the quarterback versus J.J. Watt Herbie. yeah and, and this is something that they've shown at times but look here's J.J. Watt one of the premier defensive linemen in the country how do they plan to attack him not blocking him they've been reading him making him make a decision and here he's taking Wesley on an option read same thing here on the touchdown they're not blocking him. Dalton's waiting, waiting to see if Watt's going to take the quarterback or the running back. He hesitates just for a second. Dalton uses the speed, enough speed to get into the end zone. So far, seven carries for 31 yards. On second down, there's a little bit of a flanker screen to the outside. And Curley's first catch, I believe, of this game. It is indeed. They've gone to Young several times, but they want to get Curley, their game breaker, involved. Anytime you can get the football in his hands, it's a good thing for TCU. That's why he's back on punts and kickoffs. He's just one of those typical players that you see today in these spread formations where they try to get him the football in space in whatever way they can do that. They feel that they have a chance to pick up big yards. TCU is three of three on third down. Make it three of four. That is short of the first down. Bring another TCU player making a cut and going down. And if, if he doesn't slip, he's got a chance to be able to catch the ball and get upfield. But another TCU player, the reason he's falling is his lost his balance there and did not have a chance at all but it's a stop nonetheless for Wisconsin's defense so here's the story folks you are looking at a 280 pound punter <laughs> Anson Kelton looking now take a look at this huh he looked like a linebacker or a defensive end Gilreath return ace for the Badgers fields it on the 25 and out of bounds on that far side so it was the Badgers' turn to stand up defensively. They did exactly that. They'll have the ball when you come back. ESPN College Football, the Rose Bowl game, is brought to you by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Direct TV. Don't just watch TV. Direct TV. The touchdown big box, only at Taco Bell. And Allstate. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you like Allstate. Are you in good hands? 55 years of the Beef Bowl, that eating competition between the Rose Bowl teams on separate nights at Lowry's, the prime rib. And uh, Gabe Karimi, uh, Herbie had a chance to ask him, I said, how many orders did you get, big fella? He said five. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there he is. I mean, he's a total eclipse when you stand up there next to him. I can't imagine how these defensive players are even trying to find the money backs behind this offensive line and here they come hammering with John Clay and uh, Aaron Andrews uh, Herbie has noticed a lot of slipping on the part of TCU what's the story we're looking at them those are the cleats brand new designed by Nike for the Rose Bowl they're actually supposed to prevent slipping TCU got these cleats Brent on Sunday and I heard from their staff even during practices they were changing them out so I just asked the equipment staff are you able to change out the cleats in the game they didn't bring another pair look for a lot of tape <laughs> second down and four Tolzine pulls out and fires incomplete a great coverage by Jones on that play against Patterson well, they, these hybrid safeties Colin Jones and Cuba on one side, you have T.J. Johnson. These guys do a good job of being physical and trying to come up and run support, but athletic enough to get back in coverage. And TCU again has put Wisconsin and Tolzien into a third down situation. Third down, Herbie for the Badgers. They're two of five in this game. Under pressure, incomplete. Two. 
They've gone to him twice. And Jones is there again. He has done an excellent job. He's a senior from Bridgeport, Texas. Great coverage, and this time they got pressure finally on Scott Tolzien. It's the first three and out of the football game that we've had here. And it's TCU who's this time able to bring the pressure and lower the boom. They brought both their linebackers, and Tanner Brock got home. Tolzien lucky he got that ball off with two plays back to back by Colin Jones and good coverage downfield. Now here we go with Curley back deep for TCU. Nortman and it is stopped. Whistle blue. Before the snap, false start, number 36 on the offense. Five yard penalty remains fourth down. So Ethan Armstrong picks up that penalty against Michigan State. The Spartans struck on a punt return for a touchdown. See what kind of coverage the Badgers come up with. And they're going to fake it and take off on this. And he dives for the first down. Oh, my, Brad Norman. That's one of those where you better make it or stay away from the coach. Deja vu, Wisconsin, with the Big Ten Championship on the road in Iowa City. The exact same call, and this time, Nortman was taking forever to finally get up field. Here's our, our view from the DirecTV Ultimate Picture Cam. The hesitation, I thought he might have waited too long, but he's just buying time for the convoy to get in front of him. All of a sudden, he's become an offensive weapon for this football team this year. You don't see fake punts on fourth and nine. And your own fourth territory. and nine very often. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be interesting as that was ball back in the game. And I believe he'd just gone over 100 yards with that run. T.J. Johnson makes the stop. It'll be interesting to find out after the game if the youngster saw something and did it on his own back there or they actually called for the fake on fourth and nine. Knowing Brett Bielema and, and the courage that he has shown this year, I, I think that was a call play. I don't think Nortman has the courage to be able to go out there on his own, <laughs> although he did hesitate so early. But Brett Bielema, that could change the complexion of the game as far as the momentum as well. Second down and six. Stoned in the backfield. Best defensive play of the game, and Tank Carter from Sweeney, Texas, makes it. This is textbook here for Gary Patterson. A great job by these linebackers the last two series of getting underneath the blocks and getting into the backfield. Tanner Brock starting this himself, and this time it's Tank Carter, 43. These two have been very instrumental this year for the Horn Frogs, and they're starting to settle down and get a better read on Wisconsin's offense. Third and eight can they find Lance Kendricks <laughs> Tolzien has time diving catch incomplete they wave it off they say Toon did not have the ball but he's calling for the hey call the timeout I caught this football make him review this well we're gonna take a look at it what that hand his right hand looked like it might have gotten under I don't know if the football touched the ground. This what is a, a very tough call. Brent, just the effort here by two. Now that he's healthy, you can start to see the type of receiver that he is. I, I would think they're definitely going to take another look at this. Remember, it was ruled incomplete on the field. That's yeah. always a consideration on these plays. Yeah. Yeah, there it is stopped by Shaw because the instant replay fellows are looking at it. The previous play is under further review. Yeah, I, I'll tell you, the effort here on third down, third down, watch his right hand. As it turns, does it get underneath before the ball touches? That is a tough call. What would be your call? <laughs> uh, I'd be looking at I think his right hand got underneath. I think it's a catch. What about you? I think his right hand as it turns it, remember the got ball underneath has, the football. It's incomplete if that ball slides. I honestly, as Dave Perry just told us, I did not see it slide, okay? So uh, this is a very tough call from upstairs. Uh, Nick Toon thought right away that he'd made the catch. Yeah, so we'll come right back. Yep.
Well, we are back, and they are still waiting the ruling on a very, yes. very tough call. Ruled incomplete on the field. Has to be indisputable, folks. Watch the right hand. Is it underneath it? Ball doesn't slip. Do you turn it over with that video evidence? How about the hand strength, by the way, of Nick Toon? He's like, I review this. That's a catch. That's a catch. I don't know. It's going to be. Th this is one of the longer reviews we've had, and That's I don't blame him. By the way, I don't either. This is a this is a third down and nine, or third and eight. And if it's a catch, it's a first down. If not, it's obviously a punting situation. But with Bill, here comes Steve know. with the decision. After review, it was a completed pass. It will be first and ten for Wisconsin. Play will resume after the media timeout. David Perry is two for two. You made me go out on a limb before we got Dave Perry involved. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, man. Oh, All right, 422 to left here in the first half now. Let's not forget not only that play, but the fake punt. This is the same drive where Wisconsin living on the edge here on this drive and trying to take the lead back down by four. Play action out of the power formation. Tulzine is sacked for the first time today. He is ripped down, and Jones, one of the safeties, coming in. Well, this is a great job by TCU uh, downfield with their coverage, and you can see from the DirecTV Ultimate Picture Cam, the play took too long to develop. It's first and 10 play action, but the blitz and the pressure this time by, again, Colin Jones, the senior who's having a great game. In a game that's been dominated by the offenses, Jones, in these last few series, along with the two linebackers, Carter and Brock, really starting to step up. Second and 17, White flares. They throw back to the middle, and Kendricks breaks a tackle. So Lance Kendricks catches the pass, and Cuba wrestles him down. He's a point of emphasis for this TCU defense. They know how often the Badgers like to get the 84. Tanner Brock is dialed in on Lance Kendricks. He is not able to hold on and make the tackle. He slows him down well enough. But I think Gary Patterson and the adjustments that he and his staff are making on this side of the football starting to really start to play out here for the Horn Frogs. They seem a little bit more dialed in here these last few series. Getting a little more leverage with yeah. that quick defensive line now not this time nothing doing they were held out and as a result Tolzine burns them with the pass to David Gilreath that's 13 yards and a great job by the offensive line here interesting the soft coverage look how easy Wisconsin can get off the line of scrimmage and for an attacking defense rare to see them just let Gilreath and the Wisconsin offensive line with a free or the, the Wisconsin receivers with a free release getting downfield and not getting any kind of push at all by the secondary typically they're up in your face at the line of scrimmage the freshman back on the field here comes white Battles his way for about a yard behind the right side of that line. Well, coming up on the Chevrolet Halftime Report, Chris Lee and Desmond, they'll break down the first half for you, and we'll hear from both marching bands. That'll be coming up at halftime, and there are some of their lead stories. What did the Big Ten lay an egg today, New Year's Day? Mercy. John Clay is in as the running back, second and nine. Kendricks is on the right side of the formation. Nothing doing, and this is going to be third and long. Carter again. Tank, one of the best-named linebackers in the country. <laughs> You're Tank Carter. You've got to be able to make plays. And like I said, he and Tanner Brock doing a really good job of getting away from blocks. In the first quarter, Peter Kahn's and John Moffitt and Gabe Karimi and all the way across Kevin Zeitler and Ricky Wagner, they were not only controlling things up front, they were getting to the next level and getting to those linebackers. They've not been able to do that as effectively here. Tolzine has time, snaps it off a little short. 
got back to Kendricks again and that was defended by T.J. Johnson. Well if he was willing to go on fourth and nine he will go on fourth and inches. Great effort here. <laughs> well, this is two of the best players on the field going head to head. Lance Kendricks against T.J. Johnson. Ball is thrown right on the money. Kendricks uses every ounce of his body including his thighs there to hold on to that football. Here's Philip Welsh, and of course, I think I forgot to look at the clock. And quickly, Welsh came on the field. And that's exactly why the field goal team came out. <laughs> right. I had lost track of the last 30 seconds, and it's a one-point game. A great Rose Bowl unfolding.